What up? I've made six picks this entire NFL season, and I've made six picks on the games today. So let's get right into it. First pick, Cincinnati Bengals to win. Bengals are on the road against Carolina Panthers. It's not a primetime game. Do you know what Andy Dalton's record is in primetime games? Five and 19. (laughs) He just won uh, last week against the Ravens. So now that's six and 19. But this guy is not to be trusted in primetime games. But it's not one. It's a one o'clock game, afternoon game. Uh, The Bengals are just the better team. You see here week one, Bengals on the left, Colts on the right. You scroll down here. Total net yards, 330 for the Bengals, 380 for the Colts. But the Bengals scored 34 points. The Colts only scored 23. Go over here. Ravens on the left. Bengals on the right. Scroll down. Total net yards for the Ravens here on the left, 425. While the Bengals, 373. Same score. Bengals scored 34. Ravens only scored 23. This tells you two things. This tells you that their offense is efficient. They score touchdowns, not field goals. What does this tell you about the defense? The defense will bend. It doesn't break. They allowed 425 yards, but only 23 points. I don't think the uh, Carolina Panthers are a very good team. They ask way too much out of Cam Newton. They're pretty good defensively, not very good offensively, and they're going up against a stacked Bengals team that's very good on both sides of the ball. It's going to be a long afternoon for Cam Newton, and that's why I'm taking the Bengals to win in Carolina. Okay, on to pick number two. Under 46 points, Denver Broncos versus Baltimore Ravens. This is simple. Vicious defense versus vicious defense. Well, Baltimore just gave up 34 points last week. Well, Denver isn't as good offensively as the Cincinnati Bengals, number one. Number two, if a really good defense just gave up 34 points last week, chances are they're not going to do it two weeks in a row. I think this point total is high because the Baltimore Ravens uh, have a high point per game average in large part due to winning 47 to 3 in week one against the Buffalo Bills, who, by the way, in week two had a player retire at halftime. Obviously, that result more indicative of how bad the Buffalo Bills are rather than how good the Baltimore Ravens are offensively. Now, some causes for concern. Case Keenum already has four interceptions in the first two weeks, and while Joe Flacco only has two, we know he's capable of throwing more. But Because of those turnovers and because of how good these teams are defensively, especially in the secondary, I think both teams are going to play conservative. They're going to keep the ball on the ground, which will run time off the clock. So if you want to watch an exciting, high-powered offense, this is not the game to watch as it will go under 46 points. Moving on to pick number three, Houston Texans minus six at home against the New York Giants. Hungry, hungry hippos. Since 2007, only 10% of NFL teams that have started 0-2 have made the playoffs. And look, how fitting. At the top of the article, picture of Deshaun Watson. Now, let's take a closer look at the Houston Texans. Week 1, on the road, in Foxborough, against the New England Patriots. Only lose by a touchdown. Week 2, on the road again, against the Tennessee Titans. Only lose by 3 points. I wonder if you could add those two factors to the equation first two games being on the road and losing by combined total of 10 points what that percentage would be my guess is it would be a lot higher than 10 percent so the houston texans are a lot better than what that 0-2 record would indicate they're starving for a w after coming so close in their first two games of the season they're going up against a new york giants team which quite frankly stinks you come over here NFL offensive line rankings, scroll down, 27th in the NFL, New York Giants. This is a bad matchup for them. See here, NFL pass rush rankings by Pro Football Focus come down, 5th in the NFL, Houston Texans. Jadavian Clowney was questionable. He's supposed to play today, so they're going to be pressuring Eli Manning. They're hungry for a W. They're at home, which is why I'm taking the Houston Texans minus 6. Pick number 4. Miami Dolphins minus three at home against the Oakland Raiders. Don't have a lot to say about this one. Surprise the spread is so low. I don't get it. Miami's 2-0. Oakland's 0-2. Miami's at home. Uh, Good defense versus bad defense. Uh, Miami's very good defensively, whereas the Oakland Raiders are not good defensively. Both teams are average offensive teams, so obviously go with the team with the good defense. Got my stats here. Back it up. Points per game allowed uh, by NFL defenses this season. Miami fourth. Oakland all the way down here at 24th. This is a no-brainer to me. I think Miami wins. I think they win easily. 
pick number five, Kansas City Chiefs minus five and a half at home against the San Francisco 49ers. Momentum. Both teams have momentum, right? KC won their first two games. San Francisco won their last game. Just barely, though. You see here in the fourth quarter, they went up 30 to 13 with 11.21 to go in the fourth quarter against the Detroit Lions before they allowed 14 unanswered points. And momentum usually works that way. If you play poorly at the end of a win, that momentum can carry over. And vice versa, you play well at the end of a loss, that momentum tends to carry over. Now, regression to the mean. Kansas City's offense has averaged 40 points per game so far this season. Is that sustainable? Probably not. Will they regress to the mean at some point? Probably, but their first two games were on the road, so I'm betting that that regression to the mean won't happen this week, their first game at home. Now, you're looking at the teams in the NFL that score the most points per game. If you go over here to the NFL teams that allow the most points per game, you'll see the Kansas City Chiefs are up at number four, 32 and a half points per game. So they're not very good defensively, but they're playing at home at the loudest stadium in the NFL. So it's going to be hard for the San Francisco 49ers to run their offense, call audibles, things like that. All those reasons are why Kansas City Chiefs are a lock to cover five and a half points at home against the San Francisco 49ers. Okay, finally, last pick. LA Chargers plus seven against the Los Angeles Rams. Adversity. The Rams have played some terrible teams. Oakland Raiders 0-2. Arizona Cardinals 0-2 Cardinals, arguably the worst team in the NFL. So this is going to be their first time playing against a decent football team. And I think this is going to take them some time. This is a relatively new team, a lot of new parts. I think it's going to take them some time to adjust. They're not at home. Playing away from home is worse than playing at home. And that's true in all sports. It's transcendent. This has always been the case. But last year, the Los Angeles Chargers created a whole other category. And that's playing at home, but the fans are cheering for the other team. Look at here in week one. It's a home game for the Los Angeles Chargers, but the entire crowd is Kansas City Chiefs red. That's got to be demoralizing. This is actually worse than playing away from home. So the Los Angeles Chargers have to be aware that this is a great opportunity for them to win over fans in L.A. The game is more important to them. I think. And remember, they don't need to win. They just need to not lose by more than seven points, which I think will happen, which is why my final lock of the day, Los Angeles Chargers plus seven against Los Angeles Rams. Enjoy the games, bet safe, and win some money.